So let's talk to the people. Um, I mean, back in school, if someone does science, engineering, you say these are the sharks. So this morning, I've been joined by the sharks from the University of Mines and Technology, UMAT, for us to talk about that feat that they've achieved. Aaron uh, Ontuyin is a second year electrical and electronic engineering student, UMAT, and Joel Sechimensa is a petroleum engineer. He's a graduate, but currently, he is a research and teaching assistant at the university. Uh, gentlemen, good morning. Welcome. Good morning. Thank uh, you very much. I mean, great to have you. Have engineers around me. But, and congrats as well. That feat, uh, feat you attained is, is really great. Um, how did you make it? Because you were the only uh, reps from Africa. So you represented not Ghana, but Africa. And you won. How, how did you do it? Yes, so um, first of all, I would say that robotics is a condition mm. and I see it to be more or less like a research project okay. that we use to solve problems in the drilling industry. Mm. So the, it makes the project very difficult and um, you need to be very dedicated to be able to sustain and come this far. So um, I think University of Mines played a key role mm -hmm. in our journey and in our success in that the hallmark of University of Mines and Technology is knowledge, truth, and excellence. It has prepared us, made us think critically, and solve problems very well. Mm -hmm. So it all factored in and played a role mm -hmm. into bringing us this far. So w what did you do to win the competition? Yes. So basically, what we did was we designed a drilling simulator, and um, we use programming languages to do that. So we created a digital twin or a digital replica of the directional drilling process to be able to simulate the process before you can commence your actual drilling operation, hence saving cost. Mm. So, I mean, let's say you are on the high sea, yeah. Westgate three point. Yes. And the FPSO is there, it's going to start drilling, right? That's what you mean. Yes. But before you go there, you have created a simulator that we can sit here yes. and create that environment to see whether we'll be successful or how to go about it before you, you do it. Yes. Oh. Exactly. Wow. And um, the oil and gas industry, the operations that we undergo, they are capital intensive. So, so you always need to plan before you carry out any operations. Mm. So we decided, okay, then we can also go into planning. We design, you, you simulate the process, you mm. anticipate certain problems that can occur. Then after doing that, you know how to strategize yourself and come back and prepare very well before you start the actual drilling. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm blown away by this. But we all know how expensive drilling is and the reason why even when it comes to Ghana, you know, signing the agreement, we are always at the, at the uh, we're being shortchanged because we don't come on board with some of these technologies. So this could probably be a game changer, isn't it? Yes. And I saw my, my production team run it. If you can run us through, I mean, it's all about learning. Let's learn. So production team will put it up again, and then you take us through it. When I come back, I'll ask him, because he's still in school, what's a, what, what this experience means to him as a student. So run us through how this simulation that you put up is done. Okay. So um, we have three sections of our simulation. Mm. We have the wall plan, we have the drill string design, and we have the simulation itself. Mm. So um, the wall plan deals with generating the trajectory the wall needs to follow to hit the target. When I say target, where the oil and gas is located. Mm. So it designs the optimal path that you should take to hit the target, mm. considering the formation characteristics. So your formation hardness. So, so is this all we see on the screen? So, yes. so explain to us yes. I mean, what's happening on the screen. Yes, OK. So you could see in the sidebar, you input your parameters. OK. So your formation, your survey station, then um, it gives you the, um, the trajectory or the work plan, so you can have it in 2D or in 3D. So you click 2D, 3D. I think this one is the next section, which is the drawstring section. It's optimized the selection of the drawstring by considering the torque and drag. Mm. 
Okay. I know this is quite technical, but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, let's just take it as so. So after selecting the optimal drill string selection, you can also come in with what you want to select. Then after that, you go to the simulation part. You run, so as you can see, it's running. Mm. Yes, and you also get to display some of your parameters. So, so, if, so what okay. we see on the screen now is what? It's like the well. Is this the well? Yes, so that's the well. Okay. So you realize that that was the plan, mm. and you realize that there's a green part. Yeah, it was blue, and then it was changing into green. Yes, mm -hmm. so the green part is the wall part. Okay. So when you start the simulation, the simulated part is the green part. Mm. So it shows how you are going to draw. Okay. So the drilling progress, you realize that there were some small deviations, mm -hmm. but it wasn't very visible because we made the time stamp at every five seconds, so it will update and correct. Okay. Yes, okay. So that was it. And you get to see um, your parameters, whether your drill string is backlink, mm -hmm. whether you, are, you have a very high tug and drag, whether um, your tug on bit, your weight on bit is too much, whether your RPM is within the expected range. Mm. Has this ever been done before you did it? Okay, so um, for this particular software, we have giants in the industry um, designing these softwares. Mm. In the likes of J, which is now SLB, Halliburton, oh, okay. Huge. okay. So they have these software. Mm. But it's very interesting that this time around, we have students also designing these softwares for the industry. So you designed this from scratch? Yes, we designed this from scratch. Mm -hmm. okay. um, uh, your name is Ontoyin, eh? Yeah, Ontoyin. That's, that's a beautiful name. Uh, you are in level 200. Yeah. What, sort of, what does this experience mean to you, being part of this team, to have designed this? It actually means a lot. It has exposed me to teamwork, like working with uh, my teammates from other departments, it's actually been a very good experience. And also uh, putting the things I learn in class into practice and other things I learn out of class into practice. Mm -hmm. Like I got to put my coding skills into practice. Like sometimes I learn how to code, learn how to do this. But then this project has been one of the biggest projects I've actually ever worked on, like in my programming career. Wow, wow. And, and so and what, what does that bring you? Having put your coding experience to, to, to practice in this such a manner, working with this team, what does that mean to you and your career? It, it means a lot. Mm -hmm. It means a lot. Because this is uh, a kind of experience that I will never forget. The research work we had to do, like the sleepless nights, sometimes I just remember and I feel so happy about it because it was actually real, it, it was really interesting. Mm -hmm. And also this is not something small, like the certificate I gained from it to actually carry heavy weight when I take it somewhere for anything else. So wow. I think it's actually good. I'm happy for you guys. We are, not, we are not too brilliant to be doing this, but I'm excited <laughs> that you guys are doing it. Yeah. So, I mean, when I sit here, I want to look at the relevance of this, what you've done on Ghana's oil and gas industry. What, what does it mean to, to the industry, I mean, the, 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 the general industry? Okay, so I'll say that um, the objective of every oil and gas company mm. is to cut down cost and again to reduce non-productive time and improve upon the safety. And um, the way forward in achieving this is by looking at automation and data-driven approaches. And this software achieves just that. So that was the basic concept that was used to establish this software. That's to provide a means to automate the drilling process and provide a data-driven approach mm. for the industry to be able to cut down costs mm. and um, improve upon their safety. So with what we saw on TV, yes. can a company take it now and try to use it and it will work perfectly for them? Okay. So for now, the company can use it Mm. But there are a lot of upgrades that needs to be done. Okay. So we are looking at collaborating with the industries. Mm. We could, if we could get support to collaborate with the industries mm. to help us so that we design the software to be a very robust software. Mm. Mm. Very excited for you guys. Um, what does this bring to the University of Mines and Technology? Which, of course, let me state that is in the Western region. Mm. Mm. So that everybody knows that, as we say, 
uh, you know, the best is always coming from the West. Yeah? yeah, it's only unfortunate that when we give Ghana the best, we are giving the West. But I'm sure we overcome that one. Yeah. But so, what does this mean to you, Matt? Yes. So um, I think it has really, really, really um, impacted you, Matt, in a way that um, now we have people who are. Um, before I come to the main question, I'll mm. say that for this particular software, you need to really understand the concept. Okay. Because you cannot build anything without understanding the underlying physics behind it. Mm -hmm. So it has exposed the students to gain a lot of knowledge in the industry. And again, too, it has projected the name of the university very far. Mm -hmm. And um, I believe you might is great. Uh, when you look at the likes of um, Caleb Mante and um, Liquidization, who were also past. Um, product of UMAT. Okay. They also won the presidential award. Mm. So mm. I think um, it has projected the name of UMAT. And UMAT has also played a very great role mm. in shaping us to come this far. Wow. I'm sure after this, some of you will be sought after. For example, you, yes. Slumber J, and all of those people will be coming after you that know we want to take you away from UMAT. Yes. And he, in level 200, is already marking that just after school, he will be grabbed away. Isn't that the case for you? I mean, personally. Okay. Yeah, I hope to achieve that. Mm. Um, we 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 try to we we'll try to get in touch with the companies mm. and see if we can um, make some presentations to them. Mm. And um, for now, the only publicity we've made is um, on LinkedIn. I think that's where most of the companies are. So we've been able to display what we have on LinkedIn okay. mm. to them. So. The next phase, we are looking at getting in touch with them so that if they could also provide us with um, funding funding or attachment or anything. To try and develop the soft software further. Yes, because okay. um, we actually designed the software without any experience in the oil and gas. I mean, working in the oil and gas industry. Mm. So I have no experience in the oil and gas industry working. In but you still won the competition, yes. which means that... The, the, uh, I mean, those who marked you saw something in, in the design, and that's where they took you. Yes. I, I remember when we were presenting uh, software to the robotics committee, they were very happy. Mm. They were very happy, and they were willing to have a conversation with us. Mm. Yes, that everything is perfect. Okay. Very excited for you guys. Um, I don't know if my producer would, would, would ask us to... Uh, try and engage the public on this. This is good news that Ghana needs to celebrate, you know. Um, I'm excited for you guys. Was there a female on the, on the team? Yes, there was a female on the wow. team. Wow. What's her name? Um, Precious Sego. She's okay. currently um, level 200 petroleum engineer. Mm. Okay, so, so these, these are the members, you know, uh, of the team. Uh, okay. You're the one there. Yes. Uh, se one. Second from left. Yeah. Okay. Wow, wonderful. So give us their names so that everybody who's watching can know. Yeah. Okay, so the very first from left is Joe Edu Ewuku. So he is a final year. He will be graduating this year. Okay. Petroleum engineering. Mm. And then, um, of course, that's me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm currently a research and teaching assistant okay. at UMAT. Mm. And um, next is Dela Eiram. And um, his, a, his, his pedacles show that he's a, he's a shark. Yes, he, uh, he's actually also a computer guy. Okay. So he yeah. has a, he's from the computer, and si computer science and engineering okay. final year. Mm. And that is Precious Sego. Okay. Um, she looks familiar. But, uh, wow. Yeah. Okay. And that is Aaron Unti Yin yeah. from Electrical and Electronics. And that is Edujen Fi Ogusu, okay. a final year student. Petroleum engineering. Congrats, guys! You've done so well. This, this is, this is, this means a lot to to you, yes. and not just to you, to you, Matt, to Ghana, West Africa, and Africa, because you represented as well, and you won, right? Yes. From I'm told uh, six countries yes. participated in this. Yes. And you won for Ghana. Yes. What's the next phase after winning? What next? Okay, so you are looking forward to collaborating with the industry. 
to, as we said earlier, to make the software a very robust software. But I mean, after winning the competition, is there any further thing you are to, supposed to do in the competition? Or that's it? Okay, I think that's it. So okay. you usually prepare. Okay, so um, usually for robotics, what happens is that they look at problems in the drilling industry and they bring it into the competition for students to also get the opportunity to solve. Mm. So by next year, they have another set of problems they would like students to solve, okay. and they bring it on board for students to work on. Okay. All right, very interesting.